Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. Up until about 20 years ago, most house fences here in Canberra were made from hardwood planks. That's now changed, and now when old hardwood fences wear out, they're usually replaced with metal. About a year ago, some of my neighbours were replacing their fence, so I salvaged the hardwood palings. I was originally just going to burn them for firewood, but once Mrs Tightwad showed off her rhubarb harvest on Facebook, suddenly I had orders to make six more planter boxes. This kind of box encourages the rhubarb to grow longer stems, and also holds the stems up out of the dirt. Since I'm making a lot of these boxes, I'll use my table saw to cut the pieces. I've always been cautious with this tool, especially after my brother cut off part of his finger while using his table saw. I'll start by setting a stop block on my crosscut fence. Now let's plug in the saw and get to work. First switch on the dust collector, then switch on the saw. Using this crosscut fence allows me to keep my hands far away from the saw blade. As you can see, I'm keeping my hands behind and away from the blade. You should never reach across the blade for any reason. I really should have used a pusher stick for this move though. Never use your hand to remove scrap timber this close to the blade. That's what your pusher stick is for. I'll just quickly cut this next board to show proper use of the pusher stick. You know, for a table saw safety video, this isn't going very well at all. Okay, third time for sure. Once I had the pieces cut out for the sides, I marked my workbench with the length needed for the corner blocks. This made the process of marking and cutting the 24 corner blocks much faster. I didn't cut these on the table saw because the long stick would have made the job awkward. These pieces also don't need to be cut to a super accurate length. Within 2 to 3 millimetres, about 1 8 inch, is plenty good enough. Now let's cut off those pieces with the tenon saw. Now that we've finished the cutting, we can start on the assembly. I'm setting up a couple of boards on the workbench top as an alignment jig. This will make assembling each side panel much faster. Lay two corner blocks on the bench top. Then place four of the cut fence palings on top. Press them up against the alignment jig, then drill pilot holes through their ends to avoid splitting the wood. Now we'll hammer our nails in about halfway. I'm only putting the nails in halfway because I don't want to nail the panel to the workbench. Put a spare pair of corner blocks under the panel and finish hammering the nails in. Finally, turn the panel over and clinch down the nail ends flat with your hammer. Repeat this process to make three more identical side panels. Once our side panels are complete, we'll join pairs of them together. Lay the first panel over the edge of the workbench, against the jig, then lay the second panel on top of it, and drill and nail it as before. I'll use a couple of spare corner blocks to protect the workbench top here as well. These nail ends will also need to be clinched over, like we did before. Once you've assembled the two halves of your box, fit them together like this. Drill holes through the palings into the corner blocks, then hammer in the nails. 
It's hard to reach inside the box with the hammer to clinch these nails, so I'm using the few short ones I had available for this part. Turn the box over, then drill and nail the final edge. Nice work, you've completed your first rhubarb planter box. It took a little longer to finish all six, but at the end of the day, all the customers were satisfied. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.